to the last part of the lab. This is this to me is the most interesting part because this is where um, it really shows that leaves are modified in their habitat, and you can look at a leaf and predict pretty accurately is is this from a mesophytic, a hydrophytic, or xerophytic habitat? Well, let's first look at those words. Um, hydrophyte, hydro in this case refers to aquatic or, or wet, so it's, it's a plant in a wet habitat. Put the prefix xero, and that means dry or arid. Um, that's the same root word as like Xerox. You've heard that. Xerox got its name because it invented, or it was the first to use. They didn't invent it, they first to use and got a lot of credit for the dry copier process. So they named their corporation after dry. Come over here. Oh, there's meso again. We have, this is meso. What did we say meso meant? Middle. Middle. So this doesn't mean middle leaf, it means middle plant. This is the middle ecologically between a hydrophyte and xerophyte. So here's a leaf. Is that a typical leaf of a mesophyte? Or would you expect this to be in or on water or in a desert? What do you think? Well, does this look sort of like the leaves we already covered, or does it have some special adaptations to reduce moisture loss or perhaps to survive in a lot of water? Any ideas? How many layers of epidermis? One or more? One. One. Um, guard cells, lower only, upper only, or both? Lower only. There, and actually in this view, I don't see any up here. That there's no guard cells there. So it's lower only. Um, and I don't see, I really noticed we click cuticle. I don't see any bulbiform cells. It's a typical leaf. This is a mesophyte. This is exactly the type of leaf we started with. So if we zip back really quickly, go back to where we started with right here and here. It's the exact same leaf. Um, so that's just a typical leaf. We started off with typical leaves or mesophytic leaves. Now we're going to compare and contrast. And let's compare it with this one. Um, look at some of the differences. Um, I'm going to highlight it up here. Um, what part of the leaf is this? It's mesophyll, but is it spongy or is it um, palisade? Spongy. Spongy. So this has a huge spongy mesophyll. Here's a palisade. Okay, now come down here. Look at the bracket here. I've got one, two, three, four, five layers of lower epidermis. And when you have those five layers of lower epidermis, you just scan across here, um, you're not going to find any guard cells there. So no guard cells on the lower. Guard cells, you can look from up here. In fact, at this magnification, I can't really see them well, but I can expect to find some there. So let's magnify this a little bit more. And here's what you'd find. Um, here's that opening in the palisade. Here's a pair of guard cells. Uh, that one's harder to see here, but that's a pair of guard cells too. So very, very um, thin, at best, cuticle, very thin, single-layered upper epidermis, very thick um, lower epidermis, very thick spongy mesophyll. And in fact, the, the lab pointed out is that on this plant, you can see sclerics, these little red-shaped things there. And here's one. They're branched. They look sort of like starfish, sea stars. Um, they're helping to keep the palace, the spongy mesophyll, from squishing together. So, what type of plant would this be? Hydroplant. Think of a leaf floating. Um, the root system, the plants that soak in the water. You don't want guard cells in the lower epidermis because if you had guard cells in the lower epidermis of this, what problem would this plant quickly have? Too much water, it's going to sink. And this is not a, a aquatic plant in the sense of the leaves can survive underwater. The leaves really have to be on the upper surface. So that's why the very thick lower epidermis, being thing, you're trying to keep water out. 
all the spongy mesophyll is providing buoyancy. A lot of air. It's going to float. So notice we don't, but none of that is really helping reduce water loss. If anything is, this would have a high rate of moisture loss because the vertex cells are in the upper epidermis, not lower. Um, something we haven't talked about, can, can you explain why you might think that guard cells on the upper epidermis would increase moisture loss compared to if they're in the lower only? They might enter through the lower and go out. Where is it hotter? Upper. upper. If it's hotter, higher temperature, higher rate of, of energy, more kinetic energy, you're going to speed up moisture loss. So the hydrophyte is going to lose water faster. Is that a big problem? No, it's fluffy in the water. I can see the reflection down here. No big deal. So well, and it can't have them on the lower. It wouldn't make any sense. So think of it as here's a typical mesophyte. They're on the lower only because that conserves water, and that's the best place for the openings to be. It's cooler there. Some plants have them on both, but they pay a price in losing more water. And some plants have them on upper only, and they pay a big price of lose a lot of water, but that's okay if you're a hydrophyte. You kind of squander what you have in abundance of. So there's mesophyte. In the middle, not a lot of features to reduce moisture loss. You have some. Hydrophyte, almost nothing to reduce moisture loss. It doesn't need it. So that means when we get to a xerophyte, we're going to see a lot of features to reduce moisture loss, such as... Um, can you, uh, here the front is, I can see it, but maybe the back you can't. Can you see that there's like a little halo all the way across here? Mm -hmm. That's the cuticle. So it has a very thick cuticle, and notice, look at the layers of upper epidermis. One, two, three. And the lower. There's like three, four, five layers lower. So the upper and lower epidermis are quite thick, this thick cuticle. Um, here's the thick lower epidermis. And look at this. There, there's no guard cells here because the epidermis is so thick. So this is like a chamber or crypt. The guard cells are in here. And let's magnify that. Here's where the guard cells are. And what are these things? Trichomes. Um, aren't trichomes going to, if you have trichomes in this crypt, um, what are trichomes going to do to air movement? Speed it up or slow it down? It's going to slow it down. So just having the guard cells here instead of here, that's going to slow down air movement. The trichomes are going to slow down air movement. So isn't that going to reduce the movement of oxygen and CO2? Yeah. But it's also going to reduce movement of water. And that's the key here. Um, and the lecture we'll talk about is, how can this plant survive with such a low rate of, of CO2 movement? Um, the thing to think about at this point is the limiting factor for growth here in a xerophyte is water, probably not CO2. So here's three distinctive leaves, um, hydrophyte, mesophyte, xerophyte. And you can certainly find leaves that are somewhere between those, but um, we're only looking at leaves at the extreme. Extremely, extremely hydrophyte, extreme xerophyte, mesophyte right in the middle. Okay, microscope getting toward the door. Let's look at another adaptation. And, and if, you, if you really look at the logic of this, rather than say, oh, i got to memorize all this stuff, it should make sense. Um, one of these leaves is from a maple tree, same tree. One leaf is from a leaf that was in the sun as it developed and formed and survived. And another leaf was in shade, meaning lower light levels. Is the upper one here, would you think this is in sun or shade? I think it's in shade. Um, why? Look, look at the brackets. What, 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 does this, what does this one have more of at the bottom? Palisade. Palisade and spongy, but definitely more palisade. And here, and in lecture, Thursday, we'll go into some more details. Here's a simple answer. Um, 
If a plant, as the leaf is forming, has a lot of light, it stimulates more mitosis. And so you have more uh, layers for the light to go through, and that's efficient. And so the more light there is, the leaf can be thicker. However, if you're in the shade, you don't have to go, the light doesn't have to go through very many cell layers before there's just not enough light energy to be effective in photosynthesis. So it would be a waste not the energy. It would be a waste of energy to keep the cells there and even form them or maintain them. So once you see this, it should be logical. And I hope it is you're working on them understanding the logic of specified hydrophyte, zeroflite, now sun versus shade. And where we haven't given the logic, it's coming soon for the other things. Any questions about sun or shade or specified hydrophyte, zeroflite? Okay, off on the far left, over here, getting toward the door, the last step is, now that we finished with primary growth, root stems, and leaves, I'm showing you modifications of all of them, and, and hopefully getting you to avoid these games, because I don't want you to run into prickles, thorns, or spines. So I had in the back of the room, prickles you might find on a rose, thorns you might find on a citrus tree, and then spines, like you might find on barberries, but also very commonly on cactus. So we have a cactus back here. Um, one of these is formed from stems. One is formed from a leaf. And one is, is just an epidermis modification. Which one do you think is just the epidermis modification? Prickles. Prickles. OK. It's not prickles. And here's a simple way. If you ever see a rose, um, a, a rose bush with the stems on them, you can frequently take the prickles and easily just break them off. Because there's not a lot of vascular tissue and fibers in there to support it. It's just dermal uh, tissue. However, which one of these is the heftiest? And if you have a choice of something not to run into that you want to avoid, because they're so thick and long and massive. Thorn. Thorn. Thorns. Those are going to be modified stems. And by being stems, they have nodes and inner nodes. They can branch. They can continue to grow longer and longer and longer, and they can get really nasty. And the citrus back there came off a grapefruit tree, and it's a fairly young tree, and they're already a few inches long. All of these are functioning mechanical protection, um, but it's just different ways of getting that mechanical protection. And the last one, the spines, which are very small here, and more common on the cactus, that's the leaf. But think of it is that you might say, well, how does that a leaf? Well, it's not the leaf blade, it's not that. What typically happens is that the leaf blade either doesn't form or it falls off, and the spine is just the stalk or the petal. Okay. So three different ways to get to mechanical protection and it involves different structures. We'll talk about this in evolution. Um, this is an example of uh, a convergent evolution. We'll get to that in evolution. And the last one over the far left that we'll pick up again in the upcoming lab is tendrils. And on the left is tendrils like you find on grapes. And here's the structure and it's twining around here. It helps this vine to grow. And here's pea plants. Um, are these modified root stem leaves? Yeah, it sort of looks like stem branch of leaves. Yeah, you might not make sense of it. We'll talk about this again when we start talking about the growth movements, but this actually also represents the um, mainly the leaf stalk. And they're advantageous on plants that are vines. They're not expending energy on fibers. They're not spending energy on supporting themselves. They are depending upon something else to grow on. And your bean plants don't have tendrils, but they tend to be viney. So one thing to look at is, hmm, what is an advantage of being a vine versus something that's not a vine? What you should see is a faster growth rate initially. And you think you can already see that, partially because the bean seed was bigger to begin with, more energy than the marigold. The other reason is just genetically is that the bean plant uh, grows a lot faster, and that's what you get with vines. So hopefully you're seeing today is lots of different survival strategies. Understand the logic where possible, or you don't see the logic, you'll see it in the next two weeks. Pictures are all posted. If you have questions, 